Say this with me. God is good. All the time. God is good. We have been working through some pretty foundational materials here over the last several weeks, and we're going to continue that today. We've, been, we've talked about the cross, we've talked about joy, we've talked about peace, waiting on the Lord, uh, being children of God. Last week we talked about righteousness, what righteousness really is, where does righteousness come from. Today we're going to talk about justification or being justified by God. If you know that you have been, if you're a believer, you have been justified by God. What is justification? Well, to be justified is to be declared or shown to be free from blame or guilt or to be absolved. In other words, you have been absolved or been shown to be clear, uh, free from blame or guilt. Blame or guilt for what? Sin. Sin. And so today, justification is an understanding, it's a principle for us to begin to understand as we become righteous through and everything what Christ did for us on the cross, now we are then justified or we have been shown to be free from blame or guilt or we have been absolved. Absolution is a great term because absolution means that I have been set free. In other words, I am no longer being held accountable for my sin. I'm no longer being held accountable for my sin. That only comes through believing in Jesus Christ, confessing through our mouth that He is Lord, excuse me, believing in our heart that He is Lord and confessing with our mouth, then we are saved. Because we believe and we are saved, we are then become righteous through Christ and then we are justified. Justification is a gift for us. Dr. David Jeremiah describes justification like this. Justification is our eternal position before God through Christ. An eternal position that never changes. Justification is an act of the Holy Spirit in us. Justification is for us. Justification is a transaction. A transaction that has been given to us. Justification is a trigger. It's a beginning point. Justification declares us righteous. Justification removes us, removes the guilt and penalty of sin in our life. So if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have been justified through Christ. All those things apply to you, if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, they don't apply to you. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, all these things apply to you. It is an eternal position. It's an action of the Holy Spirit. It's a place of transformation. It is for me. One of the things I think that we struggle with in, in Christianity today is the idea of being confident in what it is that has happened for us. How many of you struggle with confidence? How many of you get up every day wondering if you're saved? How many of you wonder if you're good enough? How many of you judge yourself harshly? How many of you hold yourself to a standard that you're not being held to any other place? Or even to a standard that Jesus is not holding you to? I think it's because we don't understand justification. We don't understand that we have been justified. We have an eternal position in front of God through Christ that calls me, says to me that I am absolved. Say that with me, I am absolved. From what? Sin. Sin. Not sins, not little sins. In our discipleship classes, we teach the difference between sin and capital sin, capital S, and sins, letter, little letter S. Sin is when I am separated from God. Because I have a rebellious heart. I have a rebellious attitude. I don't allow God to lead me. That's called sin. It's the same sin that Lucifer committed it before the throne of God. He stood before God and he said, I want to be just as good as you. It's called rebellion. Towards God. That's sin. 
Through Christ I have become righteous because of what He did for me on the cross. Then I am justified. I am absolved from my sin. My rebelliousness. How many times do you know that we still are rebellious towards God? Does that mean that we lose our absolution? Don't raise your hands. How many of you have been rebellious towards God this week? Does that mean you lose your absolution? That somehow you're now guilty? If that's the case, if that's what you think, then that, what that really says is that the cross was not enough. What Jesus did was not enough. That somehow you're still trying to earn your place in heaven by your action. That's not justification. That's law. That's the law. Somehow I'm good enough. I can make myself good enough. I can do enough good things. I can be a good enough person. Now I have my place in heaven. But absolute justification is that I have been given that by Christ through the cross, through the empty tomb. Now I stand before God blameless and absolved. Well, did Jesus die for me before the sins that I committed before today? Or did He die for me for all the sin in my life? All the sin. Does that mean that we shouldn't try to live holy and righteous lives? No. Paul speaks of that really clearly. It's not what it means. But one of the biggest tracks of the enemy is that he gets us to believe somehow that we have not been justified. Because of something that we have done. Or something that we have said. That we have not been absolutely justified. So justification becomes the next step after I have received Christ. I become righteous through Christ. Now I am also justified as a free gift from Christ. And all those things that are on the screen right there, all those things apply to you. And they never go away. They never disappear. And you don't have to earn them. You don't have to do anything to receive them. Once you receive Christ, you received justification. You have been justified by God. See, the key is that I'm not justified by me. And that's the trap, because the enemy wants us to get to believe that we have to do certain things to be justified. But Christ has already justified me through what he did for me. So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe in the whole of your heart here today that you have become righteous in Christ and are justified? Because if you have any question in your mind about that, your walk with Christ is going to be a struggle. You're going to get up every day trying to be good enough. And you will never be good enough, and so then you will constantly second-guess yourself and second-guess your faith. And that's where about 90% of American Christians live. They live right there. They think they have to get up every day and do something to be justified. But they have already been given justification as a gift. And so they second-guess their faith. They try to get up and try to figure out how they can be saved when they are already saved. And then what happens is we make a mistake. Somebody say amen. We do something we shouldn't do. If you've done something you haven't, shouldn't have done lately, just raise your hand. Because we all do it, right? And then what happens? The enemy does what? Comes in. Doesn't he? And where does he come in? My head. He comes in right here, doesn't he? Right here in my brain. And he, in that little that little voice, he starts. Oh, see, you're not really. See, see, that wasn't real. That wasn't real. 
Jesus didn't really do that for you. Jesus didn't really save you. What he did on the cross is not enough. You have to do more than that. See, because the enemy knows that if we will live in the confidence of who we are in Christ through justification, he loses. And he is able to steal from us the first and most important thing that we will ever have because of what Christ did for us. The knowledge and understanding that we could stand before the throne of God today justified through Him. And what we do does not affect that. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That all of my failures and all of my falling shorts and all of those things do not take away my justification. Because He's already given it to me. And He never takes away. Jesus never takes away from us what He gives us. Somebody say amen. Do you know that? Once it's given to us, He doesn't take it away. It's given to us freely. So, if we are justified, then how are we justified? Well, first of all, we are justified because He acted. Who acted? Jesus acted. Isaiah 53, verses 10 through 11, Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will, light the light of li he will see the light of life and be satisfied. In other words, he will be resurrected. By his knowledge, my righteous servant, Jesus, will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. How many will he justify? Many. Who will he justify? All who believe. All who believe. Romans 4, 24 and 25 says, But also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. When Jesus came out of the tomb... He came out so that we could be justified. What did He come out of the tomb? We, say, we preach about this. We talk about this every Easter. Jesus came out of the tomb, what? Victorious over sin, death, and hell. When He came out of the tomb, raised to life, He provides for us justification. He gives us victory over sin, death, and hell. Forever. Not just till tomorrow when I do something silly. Or I do something I shouldn't do. But forever. For those of us who believe. So he acted. We have justification because he acted. Jesus acted. God acted. They took action because there was no place for us to be justified without their action. Without their action we have no hope. They knew that. So we are justified because Jesus acted. We are justified also because he gives us grace. It's a gift. Grace is a gift that he gives to us. Romans verse 23, verse, chapter 3, verses 23 to 28. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all are justified. See that? For all are justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. Who's justified? All are justified. How? Freely. Freely by His grace. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate His righteousness because of His forbearance He had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it, he did it to demonstrate His righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Who did that? Jesus did. He gives us grace. He provides us justification. He demonstrated it so that he would be just and then justifies many or all who believe. 
It's a powerful statement to know that when I accepted Christ, I have not only become righteous as Christ is righteous, but now I am justified for life. How many of us know that oftentimes the enemy is so slick at getting us to believe the opposite of what the Bible says? We believe that stuff. He's so good at it. He does it for all of us. And in a day today where we've, we, we, we see clearly where people are preaching what is commonly referred to cheap grace, hyper grace, greasy grace. That's his message. Greasy grace is the enemy's message. But that's not grace. Because it wasn't cheap and it wasn't easy. But it's a gift. It's given to us, those who believe. Romans 5, 15 to 18. But the gift is not like the trespass, or the gift of grace is not like what? Sin. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came to him came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Now can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin? The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. Somebody say amen. The gift brings justification. For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one, through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. Note, it says, all people. All people. Or all who believe. The amazing thing about Christ's gift of grace is that it is actually for all people. Even those who don't believe, if they will just believe, they will then receive that. And yet we make it so hard. We make it so hard. So justification is because He gives us grace. I don't have to earn it. I don't have to do something to get it. I just have to believe. I just have to believe. Have you believed? And are you living in His grace? Have you believed and are you living in His grace? He, have you received His gift of grace? I see, I talk to so many people who are still trying to figure out what they have to do. And they don't have to do anything but believe. After that, God takes care of everything. And then we get to live in it. Finally, we are justified because it is His plan. Did you know that God has a plan? How many of you like to have a plan? How many when you when you sit down and you have a task in front of you, you write out a plan? You have a, you have a step, order of steps that you're going to take to get that thing finished. Did you know that God has a plan? Let me give you a, a boost of confidence here this morning. Did you know that from the very beginning of creation, from day one, Genesis chapter one, till to now, God has always had a plan. Does that give us freedom or does that give us bondage? See, I can tell you for me personally, it gives me freedom. To know that I don't have to try to figure everything out. I don't, have to, I don't have to understand it all. I don't have to try to do all that stuff. Because he has a plan. He has a plan for my life. He has a plan for this church. He has a plan for each one of us individually. He has a plan for our children. He has a plan for our grandchildren. He has a plan for our great-grandchildren. 
He has a plan for all of mankind. He knows at the very end who's going to turn to him and who's not. He knows what his church is exactly going to look like when Christ returns. He knows every soul, every person, every face that's going to be in that church. He knows every soul, every person, every face that's not going to be in that church. He knows all that. He has a plan. Acts chapter 13, verses 37 to 39, Peter is, I'm sorry, Paul is speaking. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not decay. Somebody say amen. In other words, he was resurrected. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin, a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. A justification, an absolution. I was set free. I am no longer to blame. See, the New Testament church was dealing with something that was really powerful. It was the law. It was the religion that the Jewish people had been living in all the way from Moses. The law that God gave Moses on Mount Sinai all the way to the time of Jesus. That law spoke to, declared, prophesied that the Messiah was coming in the name and, G and Jesus is that Messiah. And now Messiah has come. He has been crucified. He's been thrown in the, prison. He's been thrown in the tomb. He's now alive. Over 500 witnesses have seen him. He has ascended to the Father. And today, what they're preaching in the New Testament church is that they have been set free from sin and justified apart from the law. That the law, no, Jesus has fulfilled the law. Jesus has own self said, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. How many of us still live under law? I think if we're honest with ourselves, I think we do it more than we realize. I think we do it a lot. One of the reasons this is because law is a whole lot easier to understand than grace. Somebody say Amen. Because if I can take a piece of paper and write down a list of laws, well, I have something I can understand. It, go, it goes right to our logical thinking minds. We think we, oh, all I have to, if I could just do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, I'm going to be good. But Jesus came. But that was all defeated. And we have been justified not because of what we do, but because of what He has done. We're righteous not because of what we have done, but because of what He has done. And now we stand before God the Father, justified or absolved. Romans eight twenty eight to 30 And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Do you believe that for yourself? Do you actually believe that in all things, understand, all things, all things doesn't mean, well, only the good things. All things means bad things, sickness, struggles, car breaks down on the highway, I run out of money, all things. So I believe God uses all things to get us to drive our focus back towards something besides ourself. Drive our focus back to Him. In all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those He predestined, He also called those he called, he also just justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Do you see that pattern? All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. For those who have been called, who have been justified, and who will eventually be glorified. Somebody say amen. There's a point for us and as believers that we will be glorified. We will take on a different form, a different place in life. We will be in His presence. 
See, the focus of justification is not just necessarily today, but also the future. Where we will be glorified in His presence. I think God would, Jesus would love for us to begin to live justified, glorified lives now, practicing for what it's going to be like later. Somebody say amen. That we actually have already received that and begin to live like that. Being justified. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Justification. I stand before Jesus today. If I am a believer, if I have been converted, I want to be careful here. I don't, I'm not talking about just some decision I've made someplace where I decide I was going to be a Christian. But I have been converted in my spirit, in my heart, in my life, and in my mind. I have come to Christ. Christ has met me on my Damascus road and I have been converted. And I believe that Jesus is Lord. See, Paul's confession in, Saul, in Acts chapter 9 is that Jesus was what? Lord. He came face to face with Jesus. Friends, I want you to understand, you will never be converted in the law or in religion. The law and religion will never convert you. The law and religion will bring you to your need for something bigger than that, and that person is Jesus. When you come converted... Believing that He is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, declaring that with your mouth, believing it, that He is raised from the dead, you will be saved, you will be justified. All of your sin goes away. All of that rebellious stuff, even though you might still do some every now and again, it's all justified. One of the hindrances we live under in the in the world today, and the world tries to po poke on us and, and lay on us and lay upon our shoulders is this idea somehow that because we're a Christian, we can never make a mistake. We can never do anything wrong. And what the world does is, that, oh, see, I, I knew that wasn't real. See that? Look at that. That person says they're a Christian. Look at, look at what they're saying. Look at what they're doing. They're not, they're not Christian. They're not perfect. Because they're not perfect, that means they don't really, they're not really following Jesus. Because if they were following Jesus, they'd be perfect. Say this with me. I will never be perfect in this world. Do not let the enemy put that on you. Did you hear what I just said? Do not let the enemy or other people put that on you. That's not from God. That's from the enemy. When people begin to apply a standard to you that is impossible to live by, that is not from God. That's from the enemy. When people begin to expect you to live in a certain way or they begin to apply their expectations to you or cause you to have a certain thing or certain thing, certain this or certain that or you're supposed to do this or you're supposed to do that, understand that's not from God. That's from the enemy. Because if I believe then I am righteous before Christ I am justified before God. Somebody say amen. I don't have to prove anything to you. I don't have to live to your standard. Because I've already been justified. One of the things we need to do as, as Christians is learn to admit that we are not perfect. 
in front of people and admit that we've made mistakes, that we've done things wrong or whatever. But we never have to live according to some standard that someone else has created for me. Because we're living in the freedom of Christ. Understand, that's the bondage of law. That's the bondage of law. When people start applying that standard to us or trying to get us to force us into some conformity that they feel like we're supposed to be or function in, that's not, that's not Christ. That's law. Say this with me. I, I believe Jesus is Lord, raised from the tomb, and because of that, I am righteous before Him, and I am justified from my sin. I nobody else has to agree with me in that. Somebody say amen. I can live there without anybody else's approval. I don't need anybody else to approve me in that, right? Because I have whose approval? I have the Lord's approval. Because I have the Lord's approval, I can be free. That's who I am. I am justified. I have been absolved. My sin is not being counted against me. Now before I go any farther, I'm going to be really clear here. We need to do our best to live a great life. Somebody say amen. Amen. But to have someone put upon me a standard of perfection based upon what their notion is, is not ever Christ. That's not ever God. That's always the enemy. Because what that says is it takes away my freedom in Christ. We should do our very best to live a very good life and a great life in front of other people, but we are not ever going to be perfect in this life. So be free. Be free from that kind of thinking. Be free from that kind of mindset. Close today in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9-11. through Paul's writing says, Do not be deceived. Say that with me. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. Those people are not converted. A converted person doesn't do those things. Somebody say amen. What Paul is helping us to understand, what's the difference between conversion and non-conversion? This is non-converted people. People that do these things are not converted. They're not following Jesus. They might have a cross around their neck. They might use the name Jesus all they want to, but their actions are speaking louder than their words. Somebody say amen. Verse 11, I love this verse. And that is what some of you were. (laughs) I love that verse. I love the beginning of that verse. Because all of us can identify, right? That's what some of us were. Maybe some of us were a lot of those things. I don't know. I know there's a lot of those things that I was. But, if you ever ever really want to do a great study in the Bible, just look up the words but, the word but in the New Testament, and read every statement after the word but in the New Testament. It'll change your life. It'll absolutely change your life if you let it. But, you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You were justified. You were sanctified. You were made presentable for God through Jesus. You have been justified by God if you believe. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you have been justified. If I am justified, the only person I need to live up to, the only person I need to be focused on is Jesus. He takes care of the rest of that. 
I don't have to live according to that stuff. Because I have been set free. Set free. So do you know today that you are justified? That you have gained an eternal position before Jesus Christ? Through Christ? Before God, but through Christ? That you have, that an act of the Holy Spirit has taken place inside of you? That you, inside of you there has been a transition, a trigger? Uh, you have been declared righteous? You have been removed? You are no longer guilty from the penalty of sin? Do you know that? Because if you know Christ and you have become righteous then you are also justified. If you don't know that you're justified, you're living probably against, in accordance with the law and not necessarily in the free gift of grace that, Paul, that Jesus gives to us. And I want you today to have the gift of grace, not the law. Not the law. Have you been justified? Do you know that? See, the kick here is, do I know that in my heart? Do I know that? Because if I don't know that, I'm not going to live like that. I'm going to continue to try to live by some other kind of standard or some other kind of thing. But justification sets me free. It's actually the first step of freedom. To know that I could die right now, today, Stand before God with my Savior standing right next to me knowing that what He has done for me and because of what I believe in Him, I have been justified. Not because of anything I have done or anything I will do, but because of what He has done, I am justified. If you don't know that today, you need to know that. Because that affects everything you do in life. It affects every decision that you make. Everything that you're involved in, it affects everything. Because the world will try to take that away from me. And he wants me to live in it. Every day. So I invite you to bow your heads as the worship team comes this morning. I just want you to check your heart today. Check your heart today. Are you convinced? Absolutely convinced without any doubt in your mind. And understand, I'm never trying to, I am not trying to take away your salvation in any form. I'm just simply asking you to check your heart and ask yourself, are you absolutely convinced with no doubt in your mind that you have believed in Jesus as Lord of your life, that you have confessed with your mouth that you are saved, and because of that you have become righteous in Christ, and now you are then justified or absolved from sin? Do you believe that? Deep in your heart, do you know that to be true for you today? Because if there is any doubt in your mind, any doubt, then you, you will live a life that will not be free. And if you have doubt, I invite you to get that straight today by simply believing in your heart that Jesus is Lord believing that what he did for you on the cross was enough that as he came out of the tomb he came out of the tomb victory over sin, death and hell and he also gave me victory over sin, death and hell at that very moment as he came out of the tomb I have been given victory over sin, death and hell if I don't I have to receive that that's a gift that he gives to me now called grace to believe <coughs> you believe because if you believe then you are righteous if you believe you have been justified if you believe then you don't have to live to the standard of this world you only live with the focus upon Jesus Christ in your life everything else 
falls away. My life becomes something, an example of Him. And something new and exciting and awesome. If you need to help today, just to know for sure, I invite you to find yourself at the cross and get before Jesus and let Jesus do a work in your life. Let Him give you a vision. Let Him give you a picture. Let Him tell you how much He loves you. Let Him tell you Himself that you have been justified. The Word says you're justified. Do we believe? Father, I thank you today for your son, Jesus Christ, who, who literally, as the righteous servant, justified all of us. Justified every human being. Justified every person. Knowing at that moment that as he came from that tomb, he gave every one of us victory over sin, death, and hell. And yet, Lord, we confess there are times for us that we don't live in that. We don't live in that kind of a freedom. We don't live in that kind of a knowledge we don't in our hearts we're not really walking there we confess that there's times we fall back into the to the trap of of the law and somehow trying to do things on our own or figuring it out on our own well we just submit to you today and we invite your holy spirit to come and speak to us in a powerful way so that we would know today we would know this today That because we have believed, we are righteous. And because we are believed, you have justified us. And that we stand before you and before your Father. Absolved. Absolved of sin. (coughs) Speak to our hearts, Lord, so that we can be filled with you and with your presence and your power. We love you, Jesus. Amen.